Now we are going to rely on the wave particle duality to deduce the form of the main equation of quantum physics, the Schrodinger equation. But before going to this main part, let me ask the following question. Which picture is more fundamental, the particle-based picture or the wave-based picture? So here I have an example of what we usually mean by a particle, in this case uh, here is a baseball. And this is uh, uh, an object which has a well-defined velocity and position at any given time. We can identify its position simply just by looking at it and measure its velocity. In contrast, when we're talking about waves, it doesn't really make sense to ask the question where the wave is located. So here in this uh, example, I'm showing a wave which is generated using a rope. And, uh, well, just by looking at it, you realize that uh, there is no well-defined position of a wave. However, what we can do, we can define the uh, wave velocity and the wave vector. And also we can describe a wave uh, using uh, this uh, mathematical expression. So in this expression, uh, u is the displacement. So in this particular example, u is the vertical displacement which is a function of the coordinate and time, and the x-coordinate is this horizontal direction. And for a simple sinusoidal wave, this is the kind of expression we're going to get. Now, the relation between the wavelength and the wave vector is uh, a lambda, the wavelength, is equal to 2 pi uh, over the wave vector k. And the relation between the frequency omega and the uh, velocity of the wave so the velocity is essentially the coefficient of proportionality between omega and the wave vector k. There are actually two types of commonly used expressions to describe a simple sinusoidal wave, such as this one. So the one we, I just described, and also the one uh, using this exponential of a complex argument. So i here is the square root of minus 1. And they are equivalent to one another. So here the equivalence uh, is established by simply remembering that exponential of um, i times some real constant, let's say x, is equal to uh, cosine of x plus i sine of x. So this, is, uh, this equivalence in this case is simply an identity. In the future we mostly will be dealing with this description of a wave in terms of the exponential of a complex number. And oftentimes we're not going to actually see this imaginary part or real part. We're simply going to be describing a plane wave in terms of this exponential. So don't be surprised to see that. Now, going back to the question about uh, which picture is more fundamental, uh, particles or waves, I'm going to make a statement that uh, the latter, the waves, are more fundamental than particles. Because we cannot represent a wave in terms of a particle, but we certainly can represent a particle in terms of waves. And this representation in the mathematical language is called uh, Fourier transform. So Fourier transform, so here is a, a generic mathematical uh, example of a Fourier transform for some arbitrary function f of x. And in this case, so this, uh, this a sub k represents so-called uh, Fourier harmonics or amplitudes of this function f of x. And uh, these guys, e to the power i k x, uh, in some sense correspond uh, to a snapshot of a wave at any given time. So um, by uh, decomposing an arbitrary reasonable function into these uh, Fourier harmonics, we essentially represent it as a linear combination of waves. In particular, what we can do, we can consider, uh, let's say, in this, in this case, uh, a function f of x, which has a very sharp peak with some spread out uh, narrow width around this location, let's say delta x. And so if this is our f of x, so we can represent this f of x in terms of these waves, and this would, would be a decomposition of a particle-like entity into waves. Now going back to quantum mechanics, we can resolve a dilemma that was presented by the experiments which revealed uh, wave-particle duality. The dilemma being of how we want to describe our quantum mechanical objects, either as particles or waves. And according to the discussion in the previous slides, it seems reasonable to try to describe our quantum mechanical objects in a more general form as waves. 
And what I have in mind here are the experiments of the type by Davison and uh, Germer, who saw that uh, electrons, when being reflected from a crystalline uh, structure, they exhibit uh, interference-like pattern, just like light would do. If we wanted to describe interference of light, we actually know how to do it, because we know how to solve uh, Maxwell's equations. So the solution of Maxwell's equations in vacuum are called uh, electromagnetic waves. And uh, in the case of free electromagnetic wave, we would simply have written a plane wave, just like in the previous slide. And so this indeed would describe uh, the data in terms of interference of light. Now, uh, having in mind these experiments, which, which established sort of one-to-one -one correspondence between the interference of light and interference of quantum electrons, we are forced to write a plane wave to describe these quantum electrons. So we're going to write, let's say for electron, free electron moving in the x direction, we're going to write this exponential to the power i kx minus omega t. But without a left-hand side or right-hand side, this is not a legitimate mathematical expression. To make it such, we introduce uh, essentially a new uh, mathematical object, the wave function, psi of x and t, and we, in some sense, postulate that free electrons are described by this plane wave with some coefficient, it's not very important now, uh, and uh, k is the wave vector of an electron, and omega is the frequency of the electron. Now, to relate uh, k and omega to more familiar uh, physical properties, such as momentum and energy, we recall the de Broglie relations between them, between p and k, and omega and energy. And those relations are the following. So p is equal to the Planck constant h bar times k, and uh, energy is equal to h bar times omega. So uh, we may as well write this wave function for the electron with now with momentum p as some coefficient e to the power i over h bar p times x minus energy times t. So we uh, sort of postulated a solution to our quantum mechanical problem, but we don't have a problem yet. We don't have a fundamental equation that our wave functions, uh, electronic wave functions, are going to satisfy. So in order to figure out this equation, we uh, can recall uh, the following simple uh, equation, namely the equation for the energy, the kinetic energy of a free particle. And as most of you know, this kinetic energy is equal to mv squared over 2. Or if we want to write it in terms of momentum, momentum is mass times velocity, so we can write it as p squared over 2m. And now comes the main uh, trick in uh, figuring out, or guessing, uh, better to say, uh, a fundamental equation of quantum physics. So first of all, we're going to demand that whatever equation we're going to guess must give this plane wave as its solution. And also we're going to demand that the energy which appears in this plane wave must be related to momentum uh, per this uh, relation. Basically, we must enforce that free electrons indeed have so-called free particle dispersion or free particle spectrum, mv squared over 2 or p squared over 2m. So this also must be satisfied. Well, a reasonable naive guess, and uh, it turns out to be incorrect, let me just say, uh, would be to assume that the electron wave function satisfies the usual um, wave equation. So let's say in, in the one-dimensional case, we would write simply d2 over dx squared minus 1 over uh, the velocity of our wave, d2 over dt squared, uh, psi equals to 0. Now, if we plug uh, either of these expressions in this equation, and you can check it as an exercise, we're going to get uh, the familiar uh, relation between the frequency and the wave vector that I wrote in the previous slide, or the analogous expression for the uh, energy and the uh, momentum. But uh, it would work for actually for electromagnetic waves, it would work for photons, which are quantum electromagnetic waves. 
but it does not manifestly work for electrons because this linear relation between the energy and momentum is not what uh, is not the kind of relation we're looking for. So we must construct some other equation. And the simplest such equation can be constructed. Let me just erase this uh, part here. So the simplest such equation can be constructed if we notice that uh, the derivative, we, if we apply, let's say, the time derivative to this plane wave uh, wave function psi, uh, it's going to give us the same wave function, but multiplied with minus i over h bar times e times psi. So this is essentially the result of the action of this uh, time derivative, and for the spatial derivative, we're going to get plus i over h bar p times psi. So this is the action of the x derivative. And so we find here a clear correspondence between uh, the energy and uh, the uh, derivative uh, i h, h bar d over dt. Uh, the momentum, in this case one dimensional momentum, and uh, minus i h bar d over dx and uh, of course if we were to have a three-dimensional momentum a momentum vector uh, we would need to write minus i h bar gradient let me write it like this so this uh, uh, nabla is called gradient which is um, if we have a function let's say uh, f is uh, by definition df over dx the unit vector in the x direction df over dy unit vector in the y direction plus df over dz unit vector in the z direction. So uh, if we want to enforce the uh, constraint that the energy of the particle E is equal to p squared over 2m, so we uh, sort of forced to construct the simplest equation that would do it in the following form. So in, uh, let's say, in the left-hand side, we're going to write our energy and E i h bar d over dt acting on the wave function psi. And in the right-hand side, we're going to write this so-called momentum operator. Let me actually put a hat here. Uh, P squared over 2m, also acting on psi. Now, if we write it explicitly as a mathematical differential equation, i h bar d over dt p squared over 2m will follow from here so i squared gives us minus 1 h squared is h squared and uh, this uh, gradient squared is called uh, Laplacian so it's just uh, the usual notation for this Laplacian as uh, is either this gradient squared explicitly or this triangle so moving this p squared over 2m to the left hand side I can write it as plus h squared Laplacian divided by 2m and this whole thing acts on the wave function which in the three-dimensional case is a function of the position three-dimensional position r and time t and this equation is uh, the free Schrodinger equation which we sort of derived but of course we should use the word uh, derived in quotes because there is no way we can derive a fundamental law of physics and the Schrodinger equation is an example of such a law so our derivation is nothing but a guess but it's a very convenient guess because it allows us to generalize uh, this uh, equation to a very important class of problems namely to the problems where uh, the uh, electrons are not free electrons but uh, move in the presence of a potential so to see how this happens, uh, let me uh, sort of identify the right-hand side of this equation in this form with, the, uh, with an energy operator, so which is called, in quantum mechanics, is called Hamiltonian. So this operator H hat is a very important object in quantum mechanics. Let me actually write it. It's a Hamiltonian. And in the case of the free particle, it is simply this uh, kinetic energy, but it's very natural uh, to generalize it to the case of an interacting particle or particle in the potential, uh, in which case I will write p squared over 2m, the uh, kinetic energy 
plus uh, the uh, potential energy V of R. And if I do so, and if I write the uh, resulting equation as I H bar D Psi over DT in the left-hand side, uh, and in the right-hand side is H hat Psi, so this uh, actually becomes the fundamental equation of quantum physics that actually appears on the logo of our course, and which quite amazingly contains just about all of uh, non-relativistic, uh, well, single particle physics, and it can be generalized also to describe many, partic many, many particle physics. So uh, the theory of metals, theory of superconductors, uh, pretty much everything we can imagine that doesn't involve uh, relativistic effects uh, is contained in this uh, equation. 